You know, yesterday <clears throat> I received one of the greatest compliments that you can receive. My oldest son, biologically, said, Dad, thank you for being in our life. I was at a place and he got to talk to a whole bunch of boys around his age and their father wasn't there, wasn't present for whatever the reasons. And my son realized how bitter and how there was some unforgiveness that they had to do. And he told him that. But he said, Dad, thank you for being in our life. I really appreciate you and where we're at and what you've done. See, because in life, you know, we tend to put too much value on the opinions of what others feel about us, right? Opinion of you or judgment formed about something or someone, not necessarily based on fact or knowledge. Because see, growing up, you know, obviously I had my kids out of wetlock, but I said, I'm going to do right. I'm going to take care of all of my kids. Even to the point when I was paying child support and when the child support got canceled, I said, listen, whatever my kids need, I'm gonna go buy it. When they she needed a washer and dryer, I went out and bought it. Some people might feel different, but that was my children's mother. I remember taking them to church and one of the usher, the one lady always gave me like nasty looks. Like I wasn't even interested in her. But it's like, you know, when women would talk about they, you know, want a good man. Why would you look down on somebody that is taking care of their kids? Because we're going to go to church regardless. People going to say what they got to say, right? And now you have to understand that some people's point of view is distorted. The definition of distorted. Pulled or twisted out of shape. Or says giving a misleading or false account or impression. Misrepresented. So sometimes their point of view is distorted. And that's okay. I remember, you know, as a disc jockey, sometimes I didn't have a babysitter. So I had to bring my kids, you know, uh, DJing, you know, graduation parties. And, you know, some people would be like, man, you shouldn't bring your kids. And I, sometimes I, I couldn't have, a, I couldn't get a babysitter. What was I supposed to do? They wasn't bothering nobody. Many of y'all know, if y'all know me from my old hometown in Furrow, like I had a TV the video game was there and my kids was, was not around, like as far as out running around and stuff like that. But I want y'all to know something, Matthew 12 and 36 amplified. But I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will have to give an accounting for every careless or useless word they speak. Let folk talk. Let folk do what they do. See, I used to try to vindicate myself and I had to realize that it wasn't my job to do that, that it was God's job. Did you hear what I said? It's God's job to vindicate you. See, I used to try to vindicate myself by saying this. Sometimes one to give my side of the story. Let, let pe people go think whatever they want to think regardless. Sometimes their minds is already made up. And we sometimes I've noticed sometimes, you know, this is not all churches, but I've noticed that they don't teach this whole scripture, right? We just know Isaiah 54, 17, no one before the guest you shall prosper. That's it. What does the rest of the verse says? And every tongue, not some, but every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. Right? God's going to do the condemning. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness. Watch this. Or vindication is through me, says the Lord. Vindication. The action of clearing someone of blame or suspicion. Proof. That someone or something is right, reasonable, or justified. See, I had to realize that folks was going to say whatever they want to say. But John 8, 32, it says, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free, not set. Some translations say set. We ain't going to get on that right now. Because I'll break that down. But made free. Make you free. Because if you set something somewhere, right? You can set something else somewhere else. And here's what I realized that words only have power if we give them power. The person can call you whatever they want to call you, but it's not going to hurt unless you give it power. Proverbs 23 and 7 says, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, he says to you. 
That's why I say you can never, you have, excuse me, you have to believe in yourself. That's why I tell people, go be great. Because we know death and life is in the power of the tongue and those who love it, love it will eat its fruit, right? Proverbs 18 and 21. Why would you eat what somebody called you? Some of y'all right now are probably still dealing with some things people have called y'all from years ago. It ain't what they call you, it's what you answer to. It ain't what they call you, it's what you believe about yourself. The word says in Psalms 139, 14, that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are his works. No, I can't go back and take my kids back, and I would never do that. But at that point, I had to man up and, and take care of them. And I learned how to have a cordial relationship with the mother of my children because I was always easy to talk to. And I remember where some people, some friends, that their parents waited until they graduated to divorce or waited until they got to college. And I remember a few of them said this, and I told them, it's not your fault. And they said, I, I feel like it's my fault. So that propelled me to be a better father to my children by learning to have a core relationship for the sake of the children's psyche. That's why I don't use baby mama because it has a negative connotation. But just hearing my son appreciate that was a blessing. And yes, I heard what the other people said, but so what? I still did what I did and I still do what I got to do today. But I want you to understand this lesson. Do not allow the opinions of what others think about you deter you from going to be great. Don't allow the distraction to distract you. Some weapons, watch this, are people's mouths. Let them talk because God says I will prepare as a table in front of the presence of your enemies. And what that means is that God will have to see. They will. Excuse me. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God is going to make them see you how he blesses you. It's mandatory. They have to see it. They're going to find out. They got a front row seat. So I'll hold that word dear to me because whoever it was that my son talked to they told them how it was not to have their father and because of what I went through not having my father like I wanted to watch this it propelled me to be a better dad I said my children are never going to experience the pain that I felt not only that it allowed me to be a better dad to others right I'm a godfather to some some I have boneless children even their siblings because see I realize that our greatest pain will birth our greatest purpose and I tell people this if it was about you when Harriet Tubman got free she would have stayed free but if it was about her purpose she would have went back and once we realize it's not about us it's about our purpose it's easier for us to understand what God is calling us to do you might not be on a big stage or have a big microphone, but you may be the one to talk to some kid that goes up and grows up in bees. Somebody like a LeBron James, who's taking a lot of his money and giving back, putting kids through college. Somebody like a Jalen Rose, who's giving back. Somebody like a Ward Dunn, who's literally putting single parents, single mothers in homes you might be the one to spark that one. And I call it the power of one. So all of that that those people have said and more I haven't even talked about, I just brush it off my shoulders because God and I know the truth. So the scripture says when you come into temptation, count it all joy. Because see, sometimes the temptation is to speak your truth or vindicate yourself because they can think what they want. Luke 23 and 34, Jesus said this while on the cross. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Because if they knew any better, they would not put their mouth on God's anointed. They can't tell who God's anointed is. A lot of them should have never put their mouth on y'all. And one more thing. God said, leave room for my wrath. He gonna clap back.